but this is today, right? Or the last hundred years. What is going to happen now? Now, right? So where are the real mess taking place, right? Why are the real mess taking place? And this chart is a uh, is significant because uh, we have actuaries. We have actuaries in our midst, right? Uh, uh, people in Nuremberg, people in Exa, uh, people in uh, the marketing consulting, which is a subsidiary of Score. I can't remember the name of the company. Uh, they were giving the presentations. Remark. Yeah, remark. And they, they were doing that. And they were actually supervising data analytics. Because these are people who crew on, learn a few things, and how to supervise uh, data analytics people. Yeah? And they are all, and they, they're some of them meant to work. Uh, some of them went to work in, in Grab. There are three or four actuaries working in Grab, and there are three or, uh, many actuaries working in CXA and other chemical systems. And there are actuaries working in climate change in the UK and the US, if you take a look at that. And there are many actuaries working in bank in Australia and machine learning consultancy, loyalty card companies that are Google loyalty companies. And these actuaries are basically using the mathematics they learn and the cognitive thinking they learn, plus some of the new skills in data analytics and machine learning to apply. But data analytics people are also coming to our profession yeah, to take away our work. But yeah, science is there, but actually it's something we need to acquire. Science we need to acquire. So in Berlin, I was in a panel session with all the presidents. I was one of the participants. The panel session represents all the US, UK, uh, Australia, Japan, Europe. And, and they showed us this graph, right? So we have industry knowledge and appreciation of risk is what actuaries are. And we have data skills, data skills, but based on the old data. But we don't have the new data. The new data is really data and it's the machine learning going into artificial intelligence, which is about new era statistics. So actuaries need to go to the space to protect what we do, to protect what we do, but also to enable us to go, to go into new areas, and to go into new areas. So this is the booklet, you can get it from the website about what big data is. This is published uh, by the Academy, uh, American Academy of Actuaries, and if you look at it, it's all about statistics, it's all about neural networks uh, and, and machines, it's about machine learning, deep learning, and all that. And you look at the books, they're highly mathematical, they're not computer programs. 90% of it is high level maths. And many, some of our actuaries have to go there at a fundamental level, and many of us must know it at a more general level especially those who are aged below 40. Especially for those who are aged below 40. So this is the, 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 the things which uh, we talk about. And, and, and in, the, in the same booklet, they talk about all these hailings and where they can be applied. But that betray the people who wrote this booklet because this is the mindset. This is the mindset of a propriety product and services company. Because if you go to, uh, if you go to uh, network companies, they won't use words like that. They will use words like users, advertisers, payers, app developers, publishers, content, audience, social interaction, and all that. It's slightly different words. But it's okay. They're making a start. You must be able to think in terms of networks and platforms, which is also another strand of competencies we have to acquire. So then I go back to my main slide. Right? So, so the people who attack us, but we can also apply the skills and protect us and go to new domains. So that is a two-sided argument. But there are many actuaries in our audience or in our world who don't work as technical actuaries. They are CEOs, they are head of operations, product marketing team, head of sales. Good, good for them. Eh? Because they have skills like business acumen, delegation, communication, uh, and, and uh, this chill and society actually is all encouraged to do that. But in the new world, in the new world, there are additional strengths and they are slightly different, right? If you want to be uh, if, if you want to, uh, to thrive as a general manager and as a thinker. So the first trend which I want to talk about is the extension. The extension of data analytics, machine learning, natural language process, processing, or AI. Just think of it as a successor to our own arithmetic. Successor. If Reddington is alive today, or William Morgan is alive today, Richard Price is alive today, they know that the world requires a different treatment. The data we use today are very structured data, very structured table. You remember Gompers curse, Macon's curse, Richard Price used the data from, from Northampton and all that and looked at beautiful tables, mortality and morbidity. But you know full well, you know full well that is not going to persist because unstructured data and big data will come into play. Yeah? And things are no longer going to be single interest rate, but be multiple interest rate. So the modeling has to be very dynamic. So if Richard Price was alive today, if James Dawson was a right today, his definition of actuary is that you must use the most modern 
of mathematical methods yeah, to solve business problems. So our actuaries today, the young actuaries of today, and the, the vision of the profession must be using the most modern mathematics to solve the problems of business, especially when the domains of business is changing dramatically. We cannot rely on the mathematics and statistics of yesteryear or yester century and hope that it will be a safe and secure box forever. Because it will not be. Because it will not be. So if, if so so therefore, what, what are the additional things? The, the additional stress of competency of, of power and standing the X axis is about working with technology. When I talk about working with technology, I mean that you work with technology as a partner, as a partner, machines, drones, internet of things. Robotics, variables, GPS, Google Photos, Google Translate. Deep Blue beat Kasparov, Gary Kasparov in 1997. But today, an average chess master, an average chess master with an average chess machine will beat Deep Blue. An average chess master and an average chess machine will beat the best chess player in the world. Because it's the partner ship of man machine which makes the result an achievement extraordinary because the machine is very strong and capable in narrow intelligence man has large contextual images for the time being sitting for the next 10 20 years yeah. so how do you combine so the actuaries of the future must be an ai artificially enhanced induced uh, artificial intelligence enhanced human with human skill and human Capability, then you, are, then you really could preserve uh, what we have achieved. Yeah? So that is the, the, the case, right? So you also must understand when Deep Blue uh, defeated Gary Kasparov and when um, uh, Watson defeated Jeopardy, Jeopardy is the game show in America and he defeated two best players in 2011. Uh, it was really based on computational power with powerful logic. But last year, Last year, AlphaGo, which is uh, Google's DeepMind's uh, program called AlphaGo, uh, beat Le Sador, Le Sador of Korea, which is the grandmaster in Beijing. Beijing. Uh, in the, but that, the boundary shifted to the boundary. Because in the first two exercises, it was raw computational power. But when, when AlphaGo beat Le Sador, it was no longer just pure computing power because the combinations of those is infinite, largely infinite. But it was based on intuition and creativity. And because they were able to mimic the neural networks, we are intelligent because of our neural networks, and our brain is a function of biological algorithms and chemical algorithms and the neural networks. But, but intelligence is substrate independence. Ours is based on biology and chemistry, but you can repeat the intelligence and neural networks and deep learning in a silicon-based chip. And that's what happened. And the moves come up by, by the program was creative, intuitive, it was not logical. Yeah. So therefore, you should look at it at a YouTube one hour show. If you are not into AI, that is the first thing you can read and will inspire you and engage you because it's engaging and it's interesting. I, I would suggest that you strongly do it. The next a competency is about communication. But here communication is about communication in social networks. You still got to write your speeches well, you still got to do your presentation well. But more important, are you able to communicate in social platforms and understand the dynamics of platform systems uh, and, and ecosystems? Because the communication is very different. It's no longer hierarchical. It's network. So think about it. Right? Think about fans, right? The micro, uh, uh, and Financial, Tencent, uh, Amazon. That's how amazing it is. All our insurance companies and all our insurance companies are doing the right thing. But what they are doing is still a proprietary product services company. What they are doing is applying digital lipstick, you know, what they are doing. Yeah? But the real transformation is really on the platform company. And you can see the difference in language, the difference in, uh, in approach, and the difference in inspiration. Multidisciplinary, how you, you must cannot stay in our silo cannot stay in our silo. What will collide with our silo is things like behavioral finance, climate change, genomes, genetics, um, uh, demography, all the, uh, uh, and, and all that blockchain. All that we must get into that space because the work of the future is going to recognize less of the boundaries which we have constructed. So, 
and the last one is about mindset. The last one is about mindset. The mindset uh, which we need to have is one of genuine curiosity. Yeah? Because if you have curiosity, everything is uh, uh, a large step is done. The next thing is about adaptability. And we are not naturally very adaptable. Yeah? And the last one is the growth mindset. So curiosity, adaptability, and growth mindset. And you can ask me later about what they make of and what they, what they constitute. And actuaries are great in many ways. We have a lot of values of growth mindset because we fix the goal when we were 10 years old, 15 years old, we want to be an actuary, we want to have a safe circuit box, we work very hard and at the end it. But the danger is to think that it's a fix. A growth mindset basically says that nothing is fixed. Everything is changeable, but you can do something if you apply mastery. So don't say that you're good or you're bad. You're only as good as you apply effort. And actuaries have us enabled to come to this space.